Hey guys, this is Professor Babcock. I wanted to go over with you the epics. We have been reading um, three epic poems, probably the most famous epic poems of all time. Uh, the Iliad, the Odyssey, the Aeneid. So, first question, what makes an epic poem? Here's a, a definition I pulled up for, uh, by a couple scholars, Harm, Harmon and Holman. Uh, 1999, that should read. <laughs> uh, this was uh, written 20 years ago. So a long narrative poem, a uh, narrative poem that, that just means, uh, you know what a poem is. Uh, it's written in meter. It uh, doesn't necessarily rhyme, but it's written in meter. Narrative tells a story. So novels tell a story. Movies tell a story. Uh, a TV show tells a story. Some poems don't tell a story. They just express my, you know, my deep love, my, my red, red rose love for the mind princess. Right? They, they express feelings. They're not really telling a story. Well, an epic poem always tells a story. It's an elevated style. Okay? So it's, uh, it's using language that's not normal. People don't normally speak like this. Um, uh, but in epic poem, we're going like, to raise language. It's going to sound Shakespearean. It's going to sound uh, like, a, like a poet wrote it. It's not the way people normally talk to each other. Presenting characters of high position. Okay? Um, uh, the three heroes we've been considering, Achilles from the Iliad, uh, Odysseus from the Odyssey. Uh, Odysseus, by the way, I hope you've picked up by now, maybe I should have said this. Odysseus and Ulysses, same guy. Ulysses is Latin, Odysseus is Greek, referring to the same dude. Uh, and Aeneas, all three of these guys are of high position. They're all, they're, they're either generals or like captains or like, you know, um, they, they're high ranking soldiers and they're heroes they're 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 all descendants of the god and one uh, of gods the gods and goddesses in one way or another uh, for example uh, as you saw aeneas is venus's son venus the god of love um, her son is uh, aeneas so th these guys are basically the ancient versions of superheroes so uh, the, the epic poem is is sort of like superhero stories um, so characters of high position in adventures forming an organic whole through their relations to a central heroic figure, who I just, you know, I mentioned the big three, Achilles, Odysseus, Aeneas, and through their development of episodes important to the history of a nation or race. So that's really key, especially for Virgil. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Okay, so these three um, poems, the Iliad, the Odyssey, the Aeneid, they form something you can think of as like a Trojan cycle. They're, they're three major episodes in one universe. It's as if, you know, it, it's, not, it's really not unlike the Marvel comic book universe. Like you've got Iron Man 1, you've got like, what, um, Thor 1, and then you've got the Avengers. Like they're, they're all, they're so, you can think of them sort of like sequels. They sort of pay attention to different characters in each movie. But they're, they're part of one cohesive, overarching story. So that is what these three poems are doing. Okay, so the Iliad is written by Homer about uh, 1200 BC. It's written in Greek. The Odyssey is written by Homer about 900 BC, written in Greek. Hold up. Did Homer live for 300 years? Well, here's the thing. We don't, uh, we're not sure if there even was a guy named Homer. Um, was Homer a group of poems? Uh, you know, you have to understand how these things were written. First, they were written to be recited. They weren't even written. They were just told maybe around a campfire way, 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 way back in the day. At some point, somebody wrote these things down. We know because we have them. But was Homer the guy who like invented these stories? Did they just sort of evolve over time? Did poems add, did poets add and subtract at different times? Or was Homer the guy who actually wrote it, who like collected them and wrote it down? We're, we can't be sure about these things. There's like 3,000 years ago, it's hard to say anything about history that far back in the past. Then you get to the Aeneid. Virgil wrote this in Latin in 19 BC. 2,000 years in the past, we can, we can be much more sure about certain things. You know, not as sure as we might be about things 50 years ago. But um, there's a huge, uh, we can be much more confident about the exact year uh, the Aeneid was written. It was written between 29 and 19 BC. Uh, and it was written in Latin by a Roman guy. Homer is Greek, Virgil is Latin. So the Iliad, uh, just a quick overview here. The Iliad is the story of the Trojan War. Ilium 
is another name for Troy. So the when we call it the Iliad, we we're just, it's like we're calling it the Troyad or the Trojan. Okay, the Trojan. It's the story of the Trojan War. This like all epic starts in Medius race in the middle of things. You ever seen the original Star Wars back from 1977? Talking about Episode Four, A New Hope. Where does Episode Four begin? It it just you just it just throws you into lasers and spaceships and you know um, Darth Vader boards this spaceship and like we're we're in the middle of the war. It doesn't start with the beginning of the war. It starts with the middle of the war. That's a very epic thing to do. So the Greeks have rolled up on the Trojan shore. Uh, why did the Greeks declare war on Troy? Because Paris, a guy, not a place, a guy named Paris, who was a Trojan, uh, ran off with Helen, a Greek, the most beautiful woman in history, uh, or so we're told. And the Greeks want her back. The Greeks go to war with Troy. They're on the beach. They're basically at a stalemate. They've been fighting for years. Okay, um, And as you saw, uh, Achilles is kind of moaning and uh, pouting because... Some because Agamemnon took away his girlfriend, uh, for reasons I'm not going to go into, but you read about. Uh, eventually, one of uh, Patroclus, um, Aeneas's sorry, Achilles' friends gets killed. So Achilles finally, like he goes full, he hulks out. Right, this whole time he's been uh, not fighting as a way of sort of like getting back at being petty and getting back at um, the his own friends, the Greeks. But then one of his friends dies, and he just loses his mind and starts murdering Trojans left and right. Just as the Iliad doesn't begin with the beginning of the Trojan War, it does not end with the ending of the Trojan War. It ends with um, Achilles going off and killing a bunch of people, uh, most notably Hector, um, who is a, is a prince. Um, uh, but, you know, the, the war is not yet won by the time that story ends. The Odyssey is after the end of the Trojan War. The Greeks win it. And it's the story of one Greek, Odysseus, going home. Odysseus is the guy who came up with the idea of the Trojan horse. He's really clever. Um, it's the Trojan horse that wins the war. And you know the story, don't you? That the Trojan, the, the, Trojan, the Greeks say, we're sorry. Here, take this offering. We should never have declared war on you. Bye. And they sail off. And the Tro Trojans take in the Trojan horse. And at nightfall, um, a bunch of Greeks spill out of the Trojan horse. They open the gates of Troy. Um, and they're, they call their friends back, and the Greeks just wa waltz into Troy and burn the whole thing to the ground. Okay, Troy is ashes. It's, it's completely destroyed. Okay, so the Odyssey is the story of this guy who came up with this plan, Odysseus, trying to get back home to Ithaca. The Aeneid is very similar. It, it, it also starts in Troy, and it's the story of a Trojan getting back to a home. But of course, his home is completely gone. He's not going back to a home. He's going to create a new home in uh, what's going to be called Latium that will eventually become Rome. Okay, uh, The Aeneid is, a, is an origin story. You can think about it like that. It's the origin story of the Roman Empire. Um, yeah. So here is a map showing the... Um, uh, journey of Aeneas. There's a lot going on here. Do you see anything you recognize? See that boot-looking country on the left? Yeah, that's Italy. Um, uh, there's a big square. Uh, it says Laurentum. It looks like these, but they're U's. Laurentum there is within that big square. Um, that is where Rome is going to be. Okay. Now that's the end point. All the way to the right, you see a, a red box. Um, far to the right, it says Troia. That's Troy. That's where the battle happened. Um, by the way, uh, you know the this isn't just some total fairy tale. We uh, anthropologists, archaeologists do think that there was a Troy right around this area. They they have discovered a city that might may well have been Troy. Okay, so th there probably was a war between Greeks and Trojans if you go back far enough. Um, but, you know, were there gods and goddesses running around? Was there a Trojan horse? Almost, you know, like, no, right? Uh, but uh, in, in the t retelling of this war story over time, it came to, you know, include all sorts of um, tall tale elements. Well, this is Aeneas' uh, journey uh, to found a new home that is Rome. Um, 
Odysseus's trip back is similar to this. If you see right in the middle of this map, there's a, there's a black square and it says Ithaca. Ithaca beneath that black square. Okay, that is uh, Odysseus's home. He's, go he's going back from Troy to Ithaca. So uh, what, I, what I'd like to end on is just emphasizing the importance of national character. Homer, and, and even more so Virgil, when they're telling these stories, they're not just telling a nice story. They're describing who we are as a people. Virgil is saying, here is what it means to be Roman. Okay? Aeneas is a great example of what it means to be a Roman. He's uh, what? He's powerful in battle. He's got, now this is an <laughs> essay answer, so I'm not going to give it all to you. But there are qualities about him that show, uh, that, that are Roman qualities. Um, in the way that, you know, maybe Americans look at uh, George Washington, uh, how he uh, famously, you know, George Washington could have gone for like uh, four terms or five as president of the United States. But after, uh, after he serves his terms, he steps down. He says, no, I don't want to be president anymore. That speaks to how America, we don't have a king here. Um, we, we, we don't want to be ruled with excessive um, authority. Um, we want uh, presidents, not kings, okay, that rule forever. We want presidents that are there for a little while and then go off and, and do something else, okay? So he speaks to what it means. George Washington is sort of like, he's shaping the American character. Uh, now, he was real, and what he did was real. What these guys uh, did in our epics is just stories. But Aeneas is, Aeneas is a representation in Virgil's mind of what it means to be Roman. I want to give you one last um, episode, uh, one last illustration of what I mean here before I go. In book one of the Aeneid, uh, you'll remember there's this prophecy that gets retold where, wherein Aeneas's like great great grandchildren are going to be named, uh, he's going to, they're going to be two twins named Romulus and Remus, one set of twins named Romulus and Remus, and they will be raised by wolves. And Romulus will uh, grow in power and he will eventually become a governor and he will name his people after him Romulus. He'll name them the Romans. And this, this is the founding of Rome. So what does that say about the Romans? The Romans were literally raised by wolves. That's who we are. We were raised by wolves. The Romans are predators. The Romans are killers. The Romans are create this empire and they are like the apex predators. That's Virgil saying this is who we are. We are the tops. We are the predators. Now, there's more to it than that. They're not just these bloodthirsty savages trying to kill everyone they find, but that is a part of who they are. Uh, that is the part of the story they tell themselves about themselves. We are, they associate themselves with wolves. They associate themselves with eagles, okay? These are both um, creatures who are apex predators. There's nothing that, like, eats and hunts eagles. Like, you don't eat and hunt wolves. Like, the, the wolves eat and hunt you. So, um, national epics, uh, these three, they tell one coherent story. They're sort of sequels to each other, um, and they shape uh, the Iliad and the Odyssey, shape what it means to be Greek. The, uh, the Aeneid shapes what it means to be a Roman.